If you go to a discordapp.com URL that doesn't exist, it'll take you to this 404 page. If you click on this button, then you'll be introduced to a snake game, a version called Snack. Pretty neat, ain't it? This is my high score after trying for about 5 minutes. Also, if you go to the normal Discord app site and click on this question mark block, a variety of things will pop out with some sound effects. Thanks to Nightlight for these Discord facts, by the way. They're pretty cool. There is a lot of Discord going on in life, though, so maybe take a load off. Just sort of chill and learn some neat facts about Smash, huh? Before getting onto the juicy stuff of this video, in my last one I went over a very cool glitch that I called the Zombie Ridley Glitch. You can check that out in the video by clicking on the card, top right corner of the screen, yada yada. But to quickly brief anyone who just wants to stick to this video, basically if Ridley side B's someone, then a final smash like Clouds hits them, they can get sort of KO'd but still be alive. Hence, Zombie Ridley. And I want to cover two small follow up questions in regards to that glitch. First is from Carson Thrasher, who asks if Zombie Ridley is able to take their teammate's stock in a team match. This is sort of akin to how Zombie Ridley can be revived with the S flag, but since the game does consider Ridley in this state to be KO'd, it makes sense to think that he'd be able to take his teammate's stock as usual. So, since I could only use three controllers at once personally, I just decided to test this with Team Attack on. Also, quick fun fact, but you cannot footstool your teammate, even if Team Attack is on, likely to prevent any accidental footstools or whatever. Anyways, I enacted the Zombie Ridley glitch, and when I pressed A and B, nothing happened. I kept pressing it just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, but I never got to share a stock. It wasn't until I KO'd Ridley again that I was able to take Samus' stock. This is especially weird to me because the game definitely considers Ridley KO'd here, but it just seems that the share a stock mechanic relies on something different. And my next zombie Ridley question is from Logan P. May, who asks what happens if you become invincible during Isabelle's final smash. I didn't spend much time on the Isabel Villager variant of the Ridley glitch, since I wanted to move on to other things in that video, but this question was one I did want to touch up on. With this glitch, Ridley is able to act freely for the first second or so of Isabel's Final Smash, which in and of itself is weird. And while it was actually more difficult than it should have been to get this whole thing set up, I did make it so, during the time Ridley is able to act in Isabel's Final Smash, he would be hit by the Superstar. And when that happens... He goes invincible, yet he still takes all of the damage from the final smash, except for the final smash it seems. And he doesn't actually get launched anywhere really. But while he's stuck, I'm pretty sure I was able to do any action that entire time. It's hard to tell because of all the visual commotion, but yeah. This is really weird though, since Ridley is taking damage during Isabel's final smash, despite being invincible. This isn't too incredible, as Joker's side B curse effect will keep working on Ridley even after he's invincible. Though, strangely enough, the flower effect does not work when you're invincible. I guess there's just some unique properties in play here, and the final smash is one of them. Speaking of final smashes though, Devin Archer here tells me that Pac-Man's final smash can eat items. Very simple test, I just spawned in a bunch of food around the stage, started the final smash, and yeah. Pac-Man kept chewing up the food items. This reminds me of how Luigi's final smash can actually suck up and then shoot out items as well. Oh, and apparently the distance the item goes in this case is dependent on the item. As you can see, the beam swords miss Pac-Man here, but the home run bats hit him. Also interesting fact, but here in the training mode stage, the camera will zoom in when you use Pac-Man's final smash, and works as normal. However, if you make some distance between you and the opponent, or you put the camera on zoomed out completely, the final smash will have to travel the entire screen, making it appear slower, and essentially less effective. The slowdown effect at the end lasts way longer too. You can also see this effect with other final smashes, like Diddy Kong's. And much more noticeably with Sonic's. But while we're still on the topic of Pac-Man, Knacknode had done some testing in regards to Pac-Land, and the amount of trips you can take. 
and I'm one of those people who, before testing, hadn't seen most of the trips in regards to Packland. Normally, the match ends by the time Trip 2 starts for me, so the question of how many trips one could take in total intrigued me on multiple levels. And of course, this wasn't just something I was going to leave to someone else's word, so I put training mode on 1.5 times speed, set my controller down, and kept my Switch running. Each trip took me nearly 2 minutes, so I knew that getting to at least level 1000 would take over a day, but not quite a day and a half. One thing to point out before getting into this, since I thought it was interesting enough, is that there are 4 separate trips available in Packland. From what I gather, the actual layout of each trip was identical each time. The only thing that really changes is the time of day. You start out in midday, then go to evening, then night, then the morning, and it loops like that. As someone who had never actually seen any of Packland a little bit after Trip 2, I felt like this was worth mentioning in and of itself. Back to the subject at hand though, after about 30 hours of waiting, I got to see that the game goes all the way up to Trip 999. And just to clarify, I'm going to start using the word trip and level here interchangeably. At this level, the variant of the stage we get is the evening version. And waiting through the cycle again, we can see that it stays at level 999, staying at that evening time. So it does seem that the game caps the level count to 999. And not only that, but it doesn't keep cycling through the time of the day either. Since it took a long time to get to this level, I didn't feel like resetting trending mode just yet, and wanted to do a little bit of testing on other things. And trust me, I did a lot of testing on this stage for various questions and stuff, and here are some conclusions I've made. You know that fact I mentioned before about how if you push the hydrant on Packland, you'll get a bonus size boost? Well, it seems that this effect is a bit more ingrained into the stage than I thought. See, in this first section of the stage, there are three total hydrants, and in this brief section afterwards, there are two sticks. Out of these five obstacles, two are randomly chosen to hold the mushroom bonus. That is, two are randomly able to be pushed to the left. So when I had said that the first hydrant has the bonus, that was unfortunately misinformed. See, in training mode, when you reset the stage, there are certain random effects that will remain the same. And I believe the obstacles that get chosen to hold these bonuses also remains the same. So that's the source of my misinterpretation. But in reality, there's a random chance for any two of these five obstacles to be movable. And you also have a chance to move three hydrants in the final section of the stage, as well as the lone cactus before the pad that launches you. And doing so will again net you that super mushroom effect. Farther into the stage, we get to the section where you stop moving right and move left. The power up the fairy leaves you here grants you a jump boost. And then, if you go in between these two cacti, a Pac-Man symbol will appear. And if you grab it, you'll be given temporary invincibility, akin to the Superstar. Whether or not this invincibility bonus appears seems to be completely random though. Which seems to be an ongoing theme with this stage, as trying to attach any causal reasoning to some of these occurrences here seems to be for naught as RNG seems to be the name of this game. For example, these balloons, which, if you touch, you'll be given a minor heal. See, I tried to test a bunch of things in this controlled environment, but for some reason I was just never able to pinpoint what exactly would cause these balloons to appear or not appear. Sometimes I'd go through the whole level without getting a single secret bonus and I'd get the balloons, yet sometimes I'd do the same exact thing and get nothing. This is weird since in training mode, as I've stated, some RNG factors will remain the same even when you restart training mode. So all I can say is that it's random, and it's one of those RNG type of things that isn't consistent in training mode. Okay now I know that was a lot of pack land, but in my last video a lot of you really liked that fact about the hydrant, and how it can be pushed for that bonus effect. So despite the chaotic and uncertain nature of this stage, I felt like highlighting a lot of these bonus effects, and trying my best to give them a causal reason. Okay, to move on from Packland, while we're still here in training mode, I do want to very, very quickly highlight something that a lot of people have been telling me for a while now. And trust me, it's something I've been aware of for a while now too, but I didn't think it was a big enough deal to point out. But in training mode, if you pause, neither you nor your opponent can get hurt by anything. Here, watch as we both stand in the explosion of multiple smart bombs, completely unharmed. So yeah, there's that. Another thing that's there is this fact from Siege regarding Wario and bees. But apparently Wario's chum can actually eat the bees, and Kirby can inhale them too and whatnot. Now this struck me as odd since you can't actually reflect the bees, nor can you pocket them. Oh, a very quick tangent, but it seems that if you spam the pocket input, the temporary invincibility you get will mess with the bees. See, this is what normally happens. Now, if I spam pockets,
It does almost double the damage, gets louder, and doesn't seem to ever hit with that high hit stun move. But yeah, you can, I guess, eat the bees. Which does remind me of this month's great catastrophe, the murder hornets. At least if you live in North America or something, I have been neglecting my research on these behemoth hornets for self-care reasons. But now you know that if you see one of these murder hornets, you can simply just eat them. And while we're still talking about Wario, Eccentricon mentions a funny yet ridiculous fact about Wario's waft. This is another thing I've known about for a while, but I can guarantee you that a good chunk of viewers didn't know this yet. If you go near the top last zone of a stage with a fully charged waft and use it, yeah, he just sort of gets sent off the top. I still don't know why this necessarily happens, and I actually wasn't able to see anything related to this fact on the wiki. My friend the casual gave me the explanation that's because his waft is pushing him upwards with a wind box, which I suppose makes sense. It's like how Mega Man's up air KOs people. Notice how the up air itself doesn't KO Isabelle, rather the momentum she has from the up air when she jumps. But uh, yeah, be careful when using waft at the top of the screen now. All of this talk about Wario does have me wondering something in regards to his stage, WarioWare Inc. In P. Jiggle's last video, he had gone over every taunt in the game, and if you watched it, you'll know that he considers Wario's bike taunt to be a fourth one. So this made me wonder, does the taunt minigame consider this a taunt? My initial response would be that it does. It is a taunt after all. But when I first tried it out, it didn't quite work. I tried it a second time to make sure it wasn't just a timing issue or something, but it just didn't work. And I'm confident this isn't just an issue of timing or placement on my end, since the game is pretty generous in allowing you to win. So no, Wario's bike taunt does not work in the taunt minigame of his stage. And this reminds me of a question I got from the Turtle King, asking if Incineroar's attack taunts work in this taunt minigame. If you're not aware, every time Incineroar lands a smash attack, he'll end the animation with a little celebration, which is purely visual and can be cancelled. This is what the question is referring to. Now, if Wario's bike taunt didn't work in the minigame, I feel like I already know the answer to this question. And sure enough, Incineroar's attack taunt animation doesn't work for this minigame either. Which makes more sense, it isn't even a taunt input, but I felt like it was interesting enough to go over. And actually this brings me to the final topic of today's video, given to me by Luke Casual, but it's in relation to these automatic attack taunts that Incineroar has. Basically, if you miss a smash attack, Incineroar would do a special animation showing his disappointment. And as we just went over, if you land a smash attack, he'll do a special animation showing his excitement. But there are some certain rules to these animations that I found to be really interesting. For example, if you land the smash attack on someone's shield, you'll do the fail animation, as I'll start calling it. This is also true if you break their shield. And if it's just a parry. However, if you land the smash attack on someone who's invincible, you'll do the success animation. Which I find really odd, since in both cases you're not really attacking the opponent, but I suppose this means that the game considers invincibility way different from normal shielding. Also, apparently there's a small round of applause that accompanies every success hit, which can normally be difficult to hear over all the other noise, but you can hear it here when Mewtwo isn't actually getting hit. And lastly, Incineroar will do the fail animation when hitting things like crates or explosives. However, he will do the success animation when hitting things like sandbags or assist trophies. So I guess the latter group is just considered more like a player in this case. Anyhow, I think that'll wrap it up for today's video. I'd like to thank my patrons Verbo, LPDO Epic, and Amon Sharif for supporting me. School year is wrapping up, and by the time my next video comes out, I should be about done. I'm gonna try to organize my work enough to allow my next video to come out in a timely manner, but if that doesn't work out, I'll let you know. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want any more facts videos. I'm gonna keep them coming as long as I can for the time being. Be sure y'all stay safe, stay reasonable, and of course, stay casual. See you later.